Hey everybody, this is Tom Tony Viz. Welcome back to my uh, channel. Here I am with my raw recap. Um, overall, obviously, this was not as bad as last week's show by any means. Which, uh, granted, that isn't saying too much, but <laughs> it was it was it was better than last week. You know, I mean, uh, despite the constant reminders that next week is the 1,000th historic episode. It's going to three hours. Oh, what did he do? I mean, yeah, jeez. You know, uh. I mean, next week's show, well, I'll talk about next week's show at the end of this, but, um, I thought there were some solid and good matches on the show. There were a few squashes. Um, you know, the show wasn't great, but it wasn't, like, really horrendous either. I mean, you know, there, there, wasn't, really, there wasn't really anything memorable, um, for good or crappy-ass reasons. Uh, so we'll get into it. The show actually began with, um, CM Punk coming out. Yeah, uh, he says this might sound strange for a straight edge guy, but he loves Las Vegas. Uh, he mentions that a year ago, in the same in Vegas, he dropped yeah, he dropped the pipe bomb, and he talks about how he um, mentions that he uh, he's proven that he's the best in the world, and he's beaten everyone, including Daniel Bryan at Money in the Bank the other night, which yeah, uh, despite having a confused referee, that being AJ, of course, and uh, then he mentions that you know next week is the historic 1,000th Raw. And he says he thinks back to the first episode of Raw because he says that there was a guy on that show who looks, talks, and acts just like he does. And I got a little confused here, I gotta be honest with you. And he said that he wouldn't have been on the, I don't know if he meant himself or if he meant the guy who was champion at the time. So it wouldn't have been on, wouldn't have been on that first episode of Raw, let alone in the ring during his eight, eighth month run as WWE champion. Now, he, he, this is Punk's eighth month, uh, as champion, so he was talking about himself. But when he was saying you know, it's like the first episode, um, the well, I get it, I, um, the champ actually at the time was Bret Hart, and he was like in his third or fourth month at that point. Um, yeah, I could talk about that a little bit later on. But uh, and he uh, he says he plans on being WWE champion next Monday. He was saying more, and then Big Show comes out, and he sarcastically says the Punk's story was really touching. And he said, you know, and then he then he mentions that you know in the in the Money in the Bank match, you know, he that he was just inches away from winning and grabbing the case, and he said that you know that it was in his grasp, but Cena just happened to be in the right place at the right time when the handle that was holding up the case broke, and that was how Cena won. For those who didn't see it, um, but you know, then Big Show said that if he had won, he would ca he would cash it in right now, and uh, you know he said. Um, yeah, you know, he said if Punk wouldn't be walking out, he'd be you know, whatever. You know, he'd, he'd knock him out, and Punk wouldn't be able to walk out himself or whatever. And Punk uh, talks about that how you know during the match, you know, it's like Shell walked in the match, beat the crap out of everybody, tore up ladders, but in the end he lost. And then Punk says that you know it's like Big Show's got everything it takes to be champion. He says you know Punk uh, says that you know it's like Shell has the size and the strength, but he still but he still lost. He wound up losing. And Punk says that, you know, it's like, he's, Punk says that he himself is half Big Show size and, and is the WWE champion and has everyone's respect, while on the flip side, Big Show's got his big contract and no one respects him. And then Big Show says that the fans don't even respect themselves, and he says that if Punk, could, if Punk left WWE now, the fans wouldn't care. How ironic that he said that since that's just what happened a year ago at the last Money in the Bank. Ah, uh, here. Yeah, um, so then, uh, yeah, he's. Uh, Show says that the fans, you know, re he knows the fans don't respect him, but he could care less about what the fans think. He tells Punk that he's not special, he's just another cog in the WWE machine. And then Punk says that he's the WWE champion and Big Show isn't. Um, and then he says that Big Show, what Big Show is, is, is a bitter, underachieving, I'll be well paid. Uh, Shell of a man who just happens to be a giant, and then Shell, uh, Shell says that you know it's like after uh, he knocks Punk out, you know he'll knock Punk out, and Punk will lose to him. And after that happens, Punk could also very well, you know, since Big Show will knock him out, Punk could very well lose the title later on to John Cena. And then Big Show walked out. You know, um, this is an opening segment. You know, because uh, thankfully it didn't go on as long as last week's. It was like maybe half the amount of last week's opening promo with the dual marriage and the laptop, but, um, you know, like I said, when I was watching this, yeah, it was a good segment, but, you know, when, I, when Punk mentioned about the first episode and his eighth run as WWE champion, I, at first I thought he was talking about who was the champion 
on the first episode, but no, it was, and of course, that was, you know, on the first episode, it was Brett, uh, but, he, yeah, he won the belt in October of 92, Raw debuted in January of 93, so, he was in his fourth month reign as champ at that point, if Punk was talking about himself, but, yeah, this is his eighth run, um, so, I was a little confused by that, you know, sorry, I didn't quite get everything there, but that's right. Um, so then we get to our tag team title match, which should have happened on the pay-per-view, but we get it on Raw because we all know the pay-per-views are secondary. Uh, Kofi Kingston and R-Truth first, Titus O'Neil down young, the primetime players, solid match, Truth and Kofi retain the titles, um, AW, I think, got up on the eighth, you know, on the eighth and attempted to strike to a three, that backfired, Kofi hit the triple paradise on Titus, and then R-Truth hit the little Jimmy, as they can now call it, one, two, three, that was it. Thanks for coming, primetime players. Uh, millions of jobs, I see millions of jobs in the future, and I mean, losing matches. <laughs> uh, so match, but you know, then AW was all pissed off at the referee, and just like, and, 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 and AW was like, you know, it's like, I heard the guy can talk, so I sat on with a lame-ass gimmick of him being a modern-day Jimmy Hart with the, with the headset, you know, it's just like, that, 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 just him, cheer, him cheerleading his guys on is just so ridiculously annoying, it's just, the tracks, but it, it really, it, it really hinders any match that his guys are in. Um, yeah, and then we go to AJ backstage. Dana Bryan shows up, and you know AJ says she called the match right down the middle. A little bit of pump there, and she says the you know, she sorry. Did Dana Bryan didn't care for the outcome or whatever. And Dana Bryan goes over and he says he's sorry for the way he's been acting since WrestleMania. He says that he got so caught up in attempting to beat CM Punk for the WWE title. That he made AJ a scapegoat, and he says that he can finally, uh, you know, he can finally tell her. And then before he can say what it, what's on his mind, Eve shows up and mentions that Daniel Bryan walked out on her in the mixed tag last week when Daniel teamed with her against AJ and CM Punk. So then she says that she uh, protested to the board, and the board made a mixed tag match for tonight: uh, AJ and Daniel Bryan versus Eve and a mystery guy. So then the Eve walks off, and then the AJ asks Daniel what she what he was gonna tell her, and he says he'll tell her after the match. He kissed her on the cheek, and that was that segment. Not bad, uh, not a bad segment. Uh, so then we get to Zack Ryder and Del Rio um, squash fest. Del Rio just got the cross on breaker for the submission win. Um, you know, I mean, you know, it made sense for Del Rio to win. You know, Zack's a job guy too, unfortunately, and uh, he, uh, you know, since Del Rio lost the world title match against Sheamus, it made sense for him to get the quick win. Uh, so then after, you know, after the match happens, he, he reapplies the cross arm breaker on Zack Ryder, and then 6-1-9 man, Rey Mysterio makes his return, runs to the ring, uh, W kicks him for a bit, he pounds on him, they go back and forth a bit, uh, you know, and then eventually Ray hits a flying head scissors and, you know, sets W up and W falls in position, and then Ray gives him the 6-1-9. And then Del Rio rolls out of the ring, and then it's like all in shock, like as like one of the announcers, so, you know, it's like like he's seen a ghost. It was like, Ugh. so it was kind of cool to see Mysterio back. Um, you know, not a bad segment there. So I don't know. I guess Mysterio and Del Rio is going to be eventually happening. Uh, then we get to Heath Slater talking about uh, his favorite Raw moments, and he just makes like a whole. This was this was actually this was actually pretty funny. He talks about you know it's like how all, all the legends he's faced, you know, the, and he says you know how he. Face them and you know, took them all out of this or that. You know, Vader, Sid, you know, Cynthia Lauper and Piper, uh, you know, Bob Backlund, Doink, uh, Diamond Dallas Page, and all that stuff. You know, and um, you know, so it was pretty funny. Uh, and then they show a dressing room door, and the and, uh, Raw Legend will be coming out next. So we go to break. Back from that, Heath Ledger's in the ring, and he says, you know, he, he's not stupid. He knows a Raw Legend is is in the back, and he tells him, you know, he know he knows a Raw Legend's about to come back, and it's Rikishi. Now, I don't know if I put Rikishi in, 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 the le in the legend category. Nothing against him, but, you know, I, I don't know. I just wouldn't put him in there. Uh, so we get Rikishi and Heath Slater. Uh, Rikishi just bonsai drops him. The end. Pinfall. You know, that was it. Squash Fest City, of course, you know. Um, why are they having Slater you know, be the guy who's the who's doing the jobs to the, old, to the older guys or the you know, guys who were running around back in the day? I don't know. Whatever. Um... But hey, you know, I mean, it's, I guess it's better than being future endeavor. Uh, <laughs> so then afterwards, you know, the, the lights go out, and they, you know, they come back on, they have their, uh, 
Rikishi sons, the Usos are in the ring, and they do the old too cool bit. It was all right, you know. It was, you know, when the lights went out, I was just like, "Oh God, I hope it's not Borders Clay." And we don't see the two, and we don't see both these guys doing this, doing their shtick. But you know, thank God, you know, it's, the, the lights came back on, or the lights came back on, and it was the Usos. Uh, so then Eve, Tor- yeah, so then Eve Torres comes out, and she just gets the mic and says, "You know, her tag team partner for the evening." Q awesome, and the, and it's the Miz. So we get so it's Daniel Bryan and AJ uh, against Miz and Eve. Um, Daniel and AJ get the win. AJ pins Eve. Uh, what happened here was I forget why well, you know Miz uh, got involved in there somehow. AJ drop kicked him off the apron. Then she stared at him with those with those like with the goo goo eyes or whatever. And I was like, oh my god, now she's gonna have now, she, now, now she's gonna be after him now. And uh, yeah, there was like a bit of a distraction or whatever. Eve had an inside cradle. Got Eve in an inside cradle on AJ. Uh, but Daniel Bryan, the referee was distracted with Miz, so Daniel Bryan reversed it, put AJ on top of Eve, one, two, three, and that was it. Um, and then after the match, you know, Dan, uh, Daniel Bryan takes the mic and he says that there's something um, that AJ used to say to him, and it was something that he was too stupid and too too scared of to to say back. Now he realizes that things won't be right until he says what it is, and he tells AJ. That he loves her, and he says that last week when he proposed to her, he admitted that he only did that because he wanted to become WWE champion. But this week, he doesn't want anything except to marry her. So he gets on his knee, gives her a ring, asks her to marry him, and you know, then he holds up the mic, and you know, she's all like choked up and flabbergasted, and she says yes. They make out in the ring, and then the, they do a dueling yes. They, along with the fans, do a yes chant. Um, I don't know where they're going with this, but you know. Um, well, I mean, I, I kind of do know where they're going with this. Since next week, they're, they're, they're rushing into, into it since it's the thousand for all. I guess they want to load up the show as much as possible. Daniel Bryan and AJ Wedding is happening next week on the thousand for all. So, uh, it was a good promo, but you know, it's like, I don't know. I think the storyline is, I don't know, ever since the whole marriage thing, it's been going in a little, little bit into overkill mode, but hopefully it can go back, it can get back on the rails there, back on track. Um, so then we get live back. Uh, Jack Swagger. Match never actually officially started because when Ryback came in, Swagger just went right after him. Give him, give him the uh, Doctor Bomb. Give him the you know the Swagger Bomb or the Vader Bomb. You know the moonsault on the another moonsault to splash off the second rope. Uh, then he went for an ankle lock a couple times. Ryback shoved him off. Uh, the Ryback clothesline Swagger. Gave him a few power bombs and then Swagger just rolled out of the ring. Um, typical Ryback stuff, you know. Here, you know, I mean, you know, uh, you know what, I mean, you. Know, Swagger got a good amount of offense in, but, um, you know, of course, uh, you know, I, mean, I knew he was going to get flattened eventually, so, and that, that's pretty much it, you know, the right back character, I think, is pretty much dead in the water, uh, so then we get a, we, we have a, a tab from John Cena saying that he's got a huge announcement for later tonight, whatever, man, and uh, now they're going to be cramming this tout shit down our throats, uh, I mean, it's just like, oh, we got a new social media with, with the tout, it's, you know, it's like, who gives a rat's ass? You know, it's like, oh, it's out. Oh, you could. It's, it's going to be fans sending in their favorite, you know, it's going to be fans sending in their favorite raw moments, whatever. You know, it's just like, oh, boy, we got the new social media. Hey, yeah, yeah. Oh, and then, of course, we had the obligatory, you know, Raw's beaten out every show. Well, Law and Order's been cuffed. The Simpsons, Dunsmoke, Smackdown, and then Raw, you know, we hit the 1,000th episode. I don't know, I just saw the, you know, they had the graphic, you know, with the. the the graph of the chart. I just had the sound off. I was just, you know, it was like, soon as Michael Cole said, well, no, those were cuffed. I was like, okay, I'm turning the sound off on this crap. It's like, you know, freaking WWE saying, look at us, we're, uh, yeah, we're, we're, most, we're the, uh, the most weekly episodic television show in, in TV history, whatever, you know, it's like, uh, whatever. So then Vicky Guerrero comes out and she introduces the new, you know, money, Mr. Money in the Bank guy, Dolph Ziggler. He comes out, you know, with the Money in the Bank case, um, and he just mentions, you know, he says that every Money in the Bank contract, you know, every Money in the Bank winner has successfully cashed in, so that means he'll become the next world champion. Um, hopefully he, uh, he will, uh, you know, but, and then he says it's only a matter of time before he cashes in on Sheamus, and he'll be the greatest world champion ever, and he says, you know, it's like, he'll be better than Brett, Austin, and Rock, and every time he said their names, Vicky repeated the name, you know, each name, you know, I'm better than Brett, better than Brett, you know, she, she, was, she was just echoing them, and, you know, um, then Chris Jericho comes out, uh, before he can say anything, Dolph says, 
tells Jericho this isn't about him. Dolph says that this is his moment. Uh, you know, this is Jericho never won a Money in the Bank match. Uh, and then he asked Jericho, when was the last time Jericho actually won anything? And Dolph says, all he's heard since Jericho's return is that um, Jericho is the best in the world of what he does, and it's the end of the world, and he's you know, saving the fans from missing that. And then Dolph says, well, Jericho, you know, it's like, you know, and Jericho saying that he's the best in the world of what he does. And Dolph says what Jericho does is lose. And he says, you know, um, no one's been given more chances, you know, more opportunities and title shots than Jericho has. And he says Jericho's been, you know, pretty much coasting all along for so long. He's got everybody's fooled. He's got everybody fooled. You know, he's saying that Jericho's all hype. And then he again asks, you know, when was the last time Chris Jericho actually won a match? And then Dolph says it's possible that Chris Jericho's losing his touch and can't win the big one anymore. And then Jericho gives Dolph a code breaker. Um, and then he walked out. Jericho did. Yeah, uh, good promo, but, you know, it was like, yeah, like I said, Dolph got, you know, flattened again. He got buried again, you know. It's like, so, it looks like, I don't know if they're going to be turning Jericho fa baby face or what they're doing. Uh, Jericho versus Dolph, those could be good matches. But, you know, hopefully they won't just bury Dolph and make him look like a, you know, like a jabron, like always. Um, what I was really worried about, you know, but what I'm really worried about is hope I'm, hopefully they won't, I hope to God they don't do Jericho versus Ziggler with the money in the bank case on the line and Ziggler loses to Jericho. Because of, that would really be, uh, that would be a disaster. But, uh, th this was a good promo. It was actually, I thought it was the best part of the show. Um, then they show some, ta then they have touts from, uh, fans giving the fair raw moments, who cares. Um, then they show the graphic, uh, and that's like a bunch of stuff. The first graphic is for the, uh, first that is for the, uh, Daniel Bryan AJ wedding next week. This is all stuff, you know, and uh, they just talk about everything that's going to happen next week. The Daniel Bryan AJ wedding. Uh, then they mention the DX will reunite. Uh, that'll kick off the show next week. DX will be coming out, so are you ready? <laughs> uh, and uh, they mentioned that Brock Lesnar will respond to Triple H's uh, SummerSlam challenge. And they mentioned that The Rock will be there too, so th they got the next week's show really loaded up. Uh, then, so then, uh, before we go, then Funkasaurus Brodus Clay comes out, he does his bit. Um, then they go to break. They come back from break. There was a poll earlier, a supposed poll from on WWE.com earlier tonight, uh, asking the fans, yeah, a fan poll saying, you know, which title do they want to see defended on the on the thousandth Raw next week? The Divas, U.S. or Intercontinental title? Intercontinental title wins, so Christian will be defending the title next week. Um, then they announce that on SmackDown, Christian is going to have his uh, Pizza returning, and AJ and Daniel Bryan will be guests on that. So then we get back to the ring, Bruce Clay's still in there, and it's him and him versus JTG. Uh, you know, this wasn't uh, the typical Brodus squash, you know, J uh, JTG, JTG if, you know, surprisingly got in a good amount of offense here. It was a short match, you know, Bruce Clay eventually got the splash, 1-2-3 to the end. Um, Alright, so then uh, we get to Punk first Big Show. Um, well, the, uh, Punk actually win, wins by DQ because Big Show just shoved the referee down. And uh, so then after which, you know, just kept pounding on Punk. Um, he was going to go for the knockout punch for WMD or whatever. And then Cena came out, and Show left the ring figuring that Cena was going to cash the money in the bank in right now. So then, you know, Cena got the mic, and he was going to say what his announcement is. And then Show cuts him off and says, you know, it's like, you know, it was like, oh yeah, we know what's going to be, you're going gonna, to you're gonna, you're gonna cash in the money in the bank right now. And then Show went, you know, it's like, you know, the belt that they get, you know, that's, that, that's your spinner belt, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, it's just, you know, he says that um, the fans don't respect Cena, they don't respect themselves. And he says, you know, Cena will never have an easier title win than he will right now since Punk is vulnerable. Um, so then he tell, Cena says, tells Punk that, uh, that his, I guess his announcement, yeah, his announcement is that he's giving Punk a week to defend the title. So next week, Cena will be cashing in his money in the bank case against, you know, uh, uh, CM Punk next week. So next week, it's going to be Cena versus Punk for the for the WWE title. Um, then he says, as far as his, as for his major announcement, and he just hit Show in the head with the briefcase. Uh, and sh that was pretty much it. You know, then Punk and Cena face off. Cena hold up the, br the briefcase, and Punk held up the title, the WWE title, and that went back, you know, went, um, back and forth for a while. Um, for a while, and that was the end of the show. Uh, it was a good ending, you know. I'm really hoping to God that they don't put the belt back on Cena because, like, oh yeah, episode 1000, Super Cena's got to come out on top at the end of the whole thing. Um, 
they should really have seen to be the first out of cash in and, and, and lose. You know, it, it's not for Herm at all. Um, so, like I said, this week's show was easily better than last week's. You know, punked a big show when the uh, opening promo was good. It was, you know, it was decently good. You know, uh, big show. Uh, the punk show match was all right too. I thought that was solid and good. You know, um, Cena coming out saying he was uh, cashing in the case next week was all right. You know, I mean, I wasn't really that surprised. Um, you know, hopefully, they, hopefully they don't put the title back on him. Um, but they got their show lot. Li- they got their show stacked with you know, you know, legends and you know, the guys from back in the day and nostalgia acts and everything. So this show is really loaded up. They got the show really loaded. So I don't know. Hopefully it'll be good. But you know, like I said, what are they gonna do for next? What are they gonna do for the second three hours for episode one thousand one? Once all of the nostalgia and the legends and everything is just you know, once they've gotten the first show, the first show out of the way. Um, I thought they were rushing the the wedding thing a bit too. You know, it's like one week. You know, it's like a good you know, he proposal and was like, okay, yeah, we'll have the wedding next week. They're just, I think they're just trying to cram as much as much stuff on the show next week as they can. Um, but like I said, overall, I thought this week's show was, um, like I said, not you know not great. There weren't too many, you know, there weren't really any memorable matches. Some of them were still solid and good, but you know, the, um, and there were a few squashes in there too. But I, um, well, I mean, so we'll see how this first hour, th- three hour roll turn out. You know, I'm not really getting my hopes up. Um, I mean, this first show could be good, just because of the uh, you know the nostalgia aspect of it. But uh, afterwards, you know, for three hours, uh, I don't know. I mean, they could barely book two hours now, you know. I, mean, I know they did a better job last night than they did last week. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I'm not really getting my hopes up for uh, three hours. You know, I'm, 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 really dra- you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still dreading three hours uh, as uh, Monday night. So, um, so, I don't do it for me right now. You know, I guess, you know, I, I, um, I did manage to see most of Money in the Bank on um, Sunday night. I thought it was a decent show. It was a good show. They had some good matches on there. Punk and Burns was a good match. They didn't overbook AJ being a referee. They didn't really go to overcome over that. Um, and so I thought it was a good show. So, uh, from what I saw of it. Um, so that, like I said, that'll do for me right now. You can check out TonyGays.blogspot.com. Check out, you know, read my in-depth um, recap on the shows. Uh, feel, you know, you can add me as a contact, and I appreciate that a lot of you have been. Um, you know, you can feel free to, you know, leave me some feedback. And, um, you know, subscribe to my channel. And, uh, you know, so that'll pretty much do for me right now. You know, that's the usual rig and Um, so I'll be back on... Man, I keep getting... keep losing track of the day of the week. Uh, I'll be back, I guess, on, uh, Friday with my Impact, vi- uh, recap video. So, till then, so, till, uh, Friday with my, you know, back with uh, my Impact recap, this is Tony Viz Tone. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all on Friday. Take care, folks.